Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, thought I'd do a, a weather uh, coffee and a weather map with Jeff this morning. Main thing is Mary was doing her, she does something weekly on, I think it's in her Avon groups, but she does coffee and makeup with Mary or something like that. So I thought I would do, it, I kind of started these a, a, a couple of weeks back. I'm kind of hit and miss depending on my schedule. She has a more regular schedule. She doesn't usually work on Fridays. And I am currently off, but I go back to work tomorrow. So I thought I'd do this weather map and just kind of take a look at things going on. Oh, I know there was one thing I wanted to look at or to show everybody before we get started too far into this process. And of course, I've closed it up on myself. Oh, I know where it's at. It's on my tablet here. So uh, one of the things... I like to do before I get too far into a lot of this stuff. Now, there it is. Mary is live. Yes. As <laughs> Facebook has told me. Um, all right. We'll minimize that and get back to all my controls. Um, so, one of the things that I have um, tried to. Uh, do with this is I, I give a little bit of a map discussion just kind of see where everything's at and we'll see how this turns out um let's see here so wh what i wanted to do is uh look at some of the observations at um at gaylord here this morning and I don't have it in the right spate, spot to do that. So we'll just jump into the wet map, and then maybe we'll take a look at that a little bit later here. Well, we had fog this morning uh, over the Gaylord area, and I had been uh, taking a look at uh, the fact that we'd gotten down to about a half mile of visibility at the airport. Uh, I noticed it was kind of foggy out when I got up this morning. And let's see here. I need to do this. All right. And looking for a common isobar to start with. Looks like 1020 sticks out here to me. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's do that. You know, I know Apple tries to be helpful with certain tools, but I don't need automatically turning my drawings into, oh, I see already I've made a mistake, uh, into straight lines, because that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Yes, drawing these freehand. Well, it doesn't hasn't necessarily improved any of my uh, drawing abilities, but I do pretty decent maps. So if you ask me to ever draw a map, I can do that for you. Oh yeah, there we go. Everything looks like. <laughs> it looks like the 1020 line goes up, 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 up. 20 millibars. So, let's see here. Look at that trace a little bit here. Oh, well, I guess that's not bad. Um, yeah, I'll leave it the way it is. I was just taking a look here at where uh, some of these things are. I'll highlight this here in a second. So right here, this trough, I wasn't uh, 
completely believing that was there at first, but then I looked at the uh, the the station pressures and Sault Ste. Marie's at ten twenty, and uh, that is Escanaba at ten twenty point five. So that looks okay. So let's find ten twenty two. Do it twenty two. And then it goes scooting on up this way. Ah. And actually, there's a 1020 line over here. You're fooling me. Hmm. Maybe this is what's supposed to happen here. Which means I'm going to erase this. <laughs> oh, now I see. I got to zoom in here on my tablet so I can see it. But looks like, uh, yeah. Oops. Twenty is more like here, and it goes through here and down. There we go. Oops. Oh, that's about right. 20. Okay. Now let's see if there's anything above. Oh, there's a, well, there's one little reading of 1024. So we'll just do, we'll do a quick little circle around that. 24. Look at that. All right. So the next one to come out would be 18. I think I said in the past, I tend to do uh, two two millibar contours or hectopascals, and oops, <laughs> and my alarm goes off. That was for something that I wanted to do with. Uh, Watch the central region rock briefing. But the weather seems to be pretty quiet, so there's probably not a whole lot I need to see from our central region headquarters. And I can always look at that later. It won't it won't be a live it won't be a uh, a recording, but it will be the slideshow, so I can kind of see get the gist of it. We'll do that. Okay, so that's done up in that corner. Let's see, we'll start from over here. We'll do the 18 line. I'm kind of getting in my uh, head a little bit better on what I should cover. I'm trying to do my own thing. I don't want to necessarily replicate anybody else's sort of thing. I'm always impressed by people like Tim Vasquez, who does his um, his weather lab, um, used to own a lot of his software, or some of his software, and I like his books uh, that he's got. Uh, we have them in the office as reference for things, and he does a, a, a YouTube Patreon channel. Where you can 
where he analyzes and looks at the whole country's weather. Um, I'm kind of more focused on the Great Lakes. His is more of a focus uh, during the chasing years, or chasing time of the, chasing season, I should say, um, for severe weather chasing. And his that's where his focus is primarily on. But he does talk about things around there. I'm always happy when he talks about the Great Lakes in the wintertime because he talks about lake effect a little bit. Although that may not be his forte um, because he was more of a severe weather chaser and uh, someone who developed software for analyzing stuff like this. Let's see. When we went 1014 roughly here. No. And it comes back up. So here's the trough. And it looks like it dives down the coast a little bit and goes off. <sighs> Let's see here. Nothing really exciting has been going on in our family too much. Uh, not that a lot of people care, but some people might. Um, Mary and I are trying to sell our house here. It would uh, alleviate a large amount of debt load that we've accumulated over the years. And while we've made headway, current prices are causing us to run into some difficulties at times. So... Anyway, whoops, that's the 16 line. What was I doing? I need to erase that in. But anyway, uh, as we go look uh, through a lot of these numbers, you know, it's it can be kind of hard to um, see all of it. Um, I use a fairly large map, and I've got a big screen that I can use as well as in my tablet. What I do with the tablet, though, is that's how I'm drawing, and you're seeing me draw all this stuff. I use some streaming software called OBS for open source broadcast system. I think that's what it stands for. And uh, we use it at church, too, to stream the live stream there on Facebook and Twitter as well. And that was the uh I was but I was already familiar with this and was kind of interested in it. I have a course which I haven't quite completed and I'm probably about seventy five percent way through. And there's one thing that I know that they're supposed to cover uh in that particular um, series that I need to do, which was, um, I'd like to do more stuff with on camera. And one of the software tools has quite a bit of latency. There's a delay, if you're not familiar with what latency is, between... the camera on, say, your cell phone, because they have a way to do that, and, sorry, let me get, let's try to talk and then draw these things and get the details in at the same time, that can, it's a little, a little harder to do, um, let's see here, so here's the high, anyway, uh, the latency that it, um, puts into it is uh, quite annoying, uh, especially since if you're trying to talk, um, it doesn't quite work out. Uh, this is a ridge. That's a poor representation of a ridge. <laughs> um, and that, uh, uh, so that would you would notice like my lips saying something and then, hearing or hearing my voice and then my lips starting to move probably like two seconds later um and so i'm 
try. I have to figure that part out. I know that there's something I can do to get this uh, going, but I'm not quite sure how to do it yet. Uh, like I said, I got to finish that course, and then I think it will work better. All right, so we are going to draw in. So somewhere up here. All right, so, and the reason I got blue dashes, if anyone has seen any of my previous ones and don't know about weather maps, there's a bit of a stationary front in this area. And I am, and the low pressure is just off the map. So we could like do a small little L here. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's down there some somewhere. It's probably just a little bit farther south of the. Let's see where is that south end? Uh, Southern Illinois. Oh no, it's um. Oh yeah, no, it's yeah, be. It's probably in Southern Illinois or um, that western part of Kentucky. Somewhere in there. Okay, so now that I've changed my color red, now I can fill in the gaps. But this is pretty much a stationary front. This is, it could be more of a cold front up here, but it's pretty weak. The winds are... Um, we'll get into that here in a second. Let me finish this. Sorry, I'm kind of methodical about some of this stuff. Mm, you'd almost say OCD about certain things. <laughs> So I have to get it completed sometimes before I can move on to the next step. Okay, so let's see here. Let's do another color that's a little bit, maybe not so pale, maybe a little darker, a darker green. Let's see what that works for the highlighter. Oh yeah, that looks like that'll work. Okay, so you can kind of see the wind directions. They're kind of stewing all around. But especially as you get out here where the, the next low, which is just off the screen, um, the winds are all kind of doing this. And so they're kind of, and then up here, they're kind of running like this. So they're kind of parallel to the front. So the front, the air masses themselves aren't uh, necessarily changing. The, and that's what these, the frontal boundary, this whole boundary in there uh, is kind of signifying is that you're not getting a whole lot of movement out of the front. Now we might be getting a little bit here. There's there could be some some more, but I have a feeling from knowing the situation well enough in the last couple of days, um, and just before when I finished when when this thing was starting to show up on the weather maps, uh, that this is probably going to stay down more along the um, on the Ohio River, and or at least roughly near that. Um, so you get you get this um, basically a front that won't move. So you get a divider between the cold air to the north and the warm air to the south. Um, we do have another high out in this particular area. Whoops, let's do zoom in on that. Yeah. There's could be, I mean, there's could be some higher pressure. Whoops. <laughs> uh, let's go back to that color for this. And I am going to now switch pencils. There we go. Oh, this is the one I want. And I want blue. There we go. Let me get rid of this. So there's another high out here, um, roughly. So we'll just see where that ends up going. So, and then we've got another area of low pressure up uh, in Canada. And let's see here. I think I am done with the map itself, but you can kind of get the idea. Um, so if you look down here towards the, let me get some of the highlighter back going here. See that there's some precipitation. Well, that's a little darker than I wanted. I was hoping for that green again. Let's see here. Let's do, 
this color. That's better. Okay, so this green here, you can see the warm air is trying to get up here. Of course, then we get into the high, and then it doesn't go anywhere. And then all the blue, I'll just change it. All the cooler air is going in this direction. So, oh, that's kind of annoying. Anyway, um, so you it's all kind of running this way. In fact, you see here let's see can i do this nope it's not what i wanted okay um yeah, let's just move pencils this is what i was planning on doing before okay so you can see the cooler air is all coming down out of the high that's usually kind of what highs do they usually have a lot of uh, cooler denser air um so that's all running in here so you get all this area of precipitation change colors on that one just outline it in red and this looks to be probably rain there's no observation saying that it's snow but it could be that it's so light and it's not necessarily coming down yet and so so this is all generally moving up towards us i know that there was um the for what the we had in the forecast originally so let's jump out of that I'll say we're done with air. And I am going to, and I'm done here on this screen. There we go. And yes, you're seeing my background, which I think that was us taking pictures sometime a long time ago um, of Mary and I traveling. So let me grab my. Uh, Let's put Chrome back up here. And let's see here. Weather analysis. And just to kind of take a look at how I did. Yep, that's kind of what I was expecting. So this is 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, with the time change, we have moved now. Every, we're only four hours behind uh, UTC or Universal Time Coordinated. <laughs> um also known uh, at least in in the current uh, popular way of saying it is in Zulu time um, and it's just the the convention we use so that everyone has the same basic um, or we're doing our observations at the same time really helps out with the balloon launches so uh, but also here with the observations that way 12Z, which is 8 o'clock Eastern Time, is 7 o'clock uh, Central Daylight Time, um, and 6 o'clock in the Mountain Time Zone, and 5 o'clock on the Pacific Time Zone, um, and around the world. And so everyone, when they take their observation for 12 Zulu, then they all get plotted correctly. <laughs> and uh, that main... I mean, you could probably do all the time corrections in a in a computer, but um, you know when all these things were brought together, this was back in the pre back in the teletype era, and even back farther with telegraph. That, that that's how they did them. They they started. They found a coordinated time that they could just all use, and that was what it was. They used the Greenwich Mean Time slash Zulu slash Universal Coordinated Time. So anyway. There's that uh, stationary front, and the low actually is even further south than I thought. I uh, well, the current one is is probably here, somewhere in here. It's uh, it was in Missouri at around eight o'clock, and there's actually they have a couple of lows, and there's a whole other system down here. There's severe weather that's starting to break out down in the southwest or the southeast, central coming out of the central plains going into the Gulf Coast states. Um, and we can take a quick look at that uh, next lab. So we'll look at the radar. And what I would like is a composite. There we go. So you can kind of see our precipitation. We'll go ahead and um, do that. So you can see the precipitation. So the warm front uh, or the stationary front comes up through here. But like I said, all the moisture's streaming up over the front 
And so as you go higher into the atmosphere, the winds are out of the south or southeast. And so you're getting all this precipitation starting to um, rise or the moisture rising. And uh, down in the south, and this is one of the, the things I've told people when we sometimes get into a slight risk and, uh, or a severe weather event possible coming up in northern Michigan, pay attention to these southern uh, bow out portions of the cold front. If they get too far out ahead of, if we haven't had any precipitation or any severe weather and um, silence that, there we go. Um, if we haven't any severe weather and this thing starts to cut underneath it, um, there's a good, good chance that we won't see anything, um, in Northern Michigan or for Michigan for that matter. Um, just because of the fact this has a tendency to steal the moisture and energy that we need, which is basically, um, coming straight out of the Gulf of Mexico. And that is one of our largest moisture producers here in the Great Lakes. I know people say, but don't we get moisture from the Great Lakes? Yes, we do, but not like the stuff that comes out of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, sometimes we get it off the Atlantic. Not always the warmest uh, air, but coming out of the Gulf, that's when you have to really watch out. Big cold clash of cold air diving in with a, with a warm, uh, moist air streaming right up into Michigan. Uh, so that would be our severe weather setup, uh, typically. Um, if we don't get this uh, particular signature on there. And they're, they're having a severe weather uh, thing right now going on down there. In fact, if we click on uh, back to my other weather stuff, uh, weather prediction, storm prediction center. Here we are. SPC, the people who put our warnings out or our watches out. We put the warnings out at the office. Um, you can see, yeah, they've got uh, several watches, uh, tornado watches, in fact, and they have an enhanced risk, which is it's a pretty big deal usually going on if we ever get into an enhanced risk. Uh, I would generally tell people that you're likely, you start seeing watches uh, if you're in the slight risk area. And um if you and you probably won't see any in, in the marginal uh but you could see a warning possibly but you know they will be few and far between um statistically you are less likely to see anything in a marginal um but it doesn't mean that one can't happen so uh something to also kind of like chime in on uh as we were looking at this let's go to the mesoanalysis page on here and let's do the let's draw up the oh uh wrong one okay i need to change sectors i want this one here this is the one i want now as i was saying uh if you kind of look back even at let's see does it have the radar from four no it doesn't just the pers just the, okay so the current just the current radar all right, so uh, like I was saying for the Great Lakes, it even works for other parts of the country too. Um, if you go into the Tennessee Valley um, and part of northern Alabama, unless this stuff was going earlier, like say in northeastern or northwestern Alabama, as that front has continued to push out uh, more and more, then this, this line of thunderstorms acts as a as a block for the rest of the moisture to get out there. Part of that's because of the cloud cover, the way that things are blowing off. Uh, there's a whole host of reasons, but uh, that's that's just kind of the easy, quick and dirty way to say that. Now, as you get down here, it's a more of a broken line, but look at this. So you got something trying to form on the back side of that. So you just have to keep an eye on on things. But uh, generally, this is this is what I mean. You get far enough north away from the Gulf of Mexico uh, and you really have to watch for where the thunderstorms form up and how they're uh, moving across the area. Okay, enough of that. Um, one of the things I wanted to do, which 
Oh, I didn't turn that on, so let's do that real quick on the tablet. But I wanted to show um, capture. Okay. Um, what I wanted to show is uh, my the um, some of my. Okay, well, that's fine. Whatever. Um, I showed this earlier. Oh, hold on. Now I got to do my iPad capture. There we go. Okay, so this is a up-close version of the map that I was talking about earlier. And this one I can move around a little bit. Uh, <laughs> as you, as you see me move it and realize there's about a one second delay that I'm seeing on my screen. So you'll see the same thing as this goes out. Um, so the precipitation, um, is up, up here to the North. Um, I don't have a great way to do that while I'm on my tablet. Let's see here. Oh, it probably won't let me do a markup anyway. Um, and Yeah, and then you got all that wind, uh, surface wind blowing down out of the south. So this tends to be coming out of a dry air source. So that's why it's very broken. We're gonna have to wait till a lot of the moisture gets in much closer. Oops, can't do that there. Let's see, we'll do this. Let it redraw. So you can kind of see that the moisture is much better around the low pressure system, which is off to the south here. There we go. And I think. Now I'm not going to try and do loop that. That's that's going to be a little harder to do. Um, but anyways, you can kind of get the idea. And as I was saying, um, let me see the weather service is changing some of their stuff here. But uh, here's the visibility. We're currently at about yep at 10:25, just a little bit ago. Um, let's see if we can can we update that. Come on, weather.gov. There we go. No, thanks. We don't need to do that. Yep, 1025 is the latest one that has come. It's not the latest one out of the uh, actual observing platform, but it's the most recent one on the site. Um, we're at about five miles in, in fog. But earlier this morning, about just sometime when I, when I woke up, oh, I missed these there, which is a quarter mile right there in the center of the screen in fog. So that's... Uh, just to see that's kind of with what we're we're dealing with with the moisture that we do have um, but like I said winds are out of the northeast and while we've got fog and now it's lifting because we've gotten into some of the drier air and the temperature is starting to warm up a little bit so we went from a dew point depression of three or four degrees Fahrenheit to now we're at a difference there between um uh four six to four ish so you know we'll we'll see um it's and the winds are starting to pick up above three three miles an hour so um it we're probably going to start seeing a little bit of that dry air trying to work in uh with all that northeast flow that we had going with it let's see here uh, i know that if i um let's see Let's do this as well. <laughs> oh, that's not what I want. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, let's do this. And. Oh. I had a completely different link on the other one. Uh, let's see here. What is the, this one's called? WRH Time Series. Oh, hmm. oh, but it's at weather.gov. All right. Well, we won't change this one. It didn't give me the big warning. Uh, one of the web pages I use for these is going away. So this is a little bit easier to see because it's not every five minutes. Um, at the last observation around 10 o'clock uh, of the hourlies, um, there we have it at, at, it was at three miles. Uh, it's jumped up to five miles now. And the northeast wind that's just been trying to hang in there, trying to push some of the drier air in here. 
Um, I know the relative humidity is uh, getting back up there, but uh, I would just say just keep keep watching. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Although the moisture is it starts to increase uh, depending on how close the low goes, which we can do. Um, that was one of the other things I had going on here. Oh, yes. Oh, I never did switch you over on that thing. Okay, so <laughs> let's see here. So the low this morning, let's see if what this is the 0Z. Zero oh, 0Z zero European. Okay, so um, and our time on it, oh, that's for 8 o'clock tonight. Let's go back here. Whoops. There we are. Yeah, so the European had the low at 12Z down there. Um, looking at the low pressure system on the on the big uh, frame that we had. Let me just take a quick look back there to see how all this stuff is working. Um, the low was supposed to be the 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 main area of low pressure. Whoops, let me go in. There we go. Come on. Uh, was roughly in southwestern uh, Missouri. And if we go back to the iPad, you can see that that is indeed roughly pretty close. The low is all in that area. It's, it thought maybe it would be in northeastern Oklahoma, but it was really close. So that's what it was. We always do that. We take take a look at how well the models are, are pushing this stuff. So looking at, at all of our precipitation, um, we're back to 12Z, so let's go back up. Oop, let's go to 18. No, keep going backwards. <sighs> Silly touch screens. There we go. 18. So this is uh, for 2 o'clock this afternoon. Um, the load doesn't move very far, just to move, it's moving through Missouri, and at least the European doesn't think that we would get a whole lot of precipitation out of here. In fact, if I go to, we zoom in, and I'm going to change this to the regional look on the fly, go to the Midwest. Okay, so we will go up to 18Z. You know, that's kind of what we're expecting precipitation to get pretty close. And that is not what it was supposed to do. I'm supposed to hit this one. There we go. All right. So <laughs> zero Z. <laughs> so at eight o'clock tonight, we should be in rain. Um, looks like there could be some mixed precip. At least that's what the model thinks. I don't know if we have anything. It looks like we have some snow idea up in the, the UP with rain generally down here. We'll have to see how far the cold air can, can stay rooted in here. Um, you know, with us in the mid 30s, it's possible that we could get down closer to freezing, but then we probably would change to snow um, in this case. But we'll see. Uh, and then some sort of mixed precipitation by tomorrow afternoon. And then snow, which I know we had that in the forecast, um, which is one of the things that we'll take a look at real quick here as well. What time is it? Oh, 10.43. Okay. Yeah, so I try to get these things started around, um, you know, at the top of the hour or something. And then I realize I run for like 45 minutes. So um, let's switch over back to the main monitor here. All right, so our forecast around the Gaylord area, but it's probably pretty close to most of the other areas too. Um, slight chance of rain or snow here this morning, probably more like rain, especially at our temperatures. Uh, a chance of rain here for the afternoon. Um, high 39, winds out of the east at 10 miles an hour. That looks pretty good. Chance of precipitation, and that's measurable precipitation. So if we, if we get a hundredth of an inch of liquid or a tenth of an inch of snow, then we, we can measure it. So that's where the, the chances come in. You could get some sprinkles in there or a couple of flurries, which don't measure. <laughs> so uh, tonight, expecting more rain, uh, low around 41. 
new precipitation amounts between a quarter and a half inch. So my guess is, and we can take a look at this by, let's go down here to the uh, hourly weather forecast graph. Let's turn off some of these uh, things that we don't need. Wind chill is interesting, but not necessarily what we want. Uh, I guess we will take the thunder out. Uh, sky cover is not that big of a deal with what we're doing. The relative humidity would, doesn't really matter as much right now either. Winds, yeah, we'll do the winds. And we'll submit that. Okay, cleans up the, the graph here a little bit. So the idea is uh, with the tonight forecast, yeah, so it says low around 31. So it's possible the low temperature could occur here and get down to 31. Oh, we're still supposed to have rain, though. So um, there, yeah, there's a disconnect sometimes. But right now, the hourly temperatures are expected to stay just above freezing. Um, and sometimes that's what I pay attention to more. Uh, could there be a temperature? Could it briefly get down to 32 and freeze? Yeah, it'd be pretty close. So we'll see. Um, the precipitation potential goes up close to basically for all intents and purposes, either 90 to 100 percent, which means we are expecting measurable precipitation. Of course, down here in the actual uh, rain amounts uh, overnight, we're expecting almost a half an inch of rain. And let's see, 22 and 19 is uh, 41. So we're four point. Uh, um, I mean, 0. 0.41 inches, so almost a half an inch of rain. And then another uh, just over a tenth tomorrow. So we'll see how that works out. QPF is not always the model's strong suit, um, but we'll see where we go. We make some adjustments, but even that's kind of a, a hard process to gauge. And they really don't have any snow in the forecast until late tomorrow afternoon. And then we're only expected to get a couple of tenths of an inch here in Gaylord. So uh, just just to be on the lookout, winds will pick up here uh, as well. And remember how I said that the winds would be uh, uh, kind of along the front? And that's probably why these temperatures just kind of go nowhere. Um, we're kind of out of the northeast, which is cooling us a bit. But once the precipitation, which there's probably more warm air aloft uh, that'll slow down any warm or any cooling here overnight and then the other thing too is is that the winds become parallel to that front or just around the the low and the air while it's somewhat modified it may start off much warmer it will cool slightly um, so and and at these wind directions as the low goes by to our south and across over there, our winds will eventually start to cool off, but it won't be in, uh, enough to to uh, really bring in some cool air aloft until it gets. Uh, we're getting here into the later in the afternoon, uh, and that's when we expect to see the snow. So uh, the general expectation right now is for the rain to just continue through everything. Um, so I think that's pretty much all I've wanted to go through with everyone. Um, here, let's go to pivotal weather real quick. I do, there was one other thing I do, did want to take a look at. Uh, we'll go to pivotal. And into the models. And the GFS. Um, so it's 6Z run with the 12Z. Uh, 12Z it was down there where we're seeing the low pressure system. Um, not a whole lot of precipitation. So 15Z is 11 o'clock, and we are approaching that right now. And, whoops. And so uh, 2 o'clock, yeah, it doesn't think we will have much in the way of precipitation either. But like we said, it was, um, let's see here. Let's pull up our current. I'm going to pull this up. Um so that's just something that we'll we'll keep an eye on here. I'm going to change just the forecast loop because this is easier for me to control this way then. So you can kind of see, you know, the low starts going through tomorrow, and then we get into the cold air, and then we get a little bit of snow, and then it moves out. So we're not expecting a lot. 
you know, we're this is a pretty typical sort of uh, spring storm. Uh, the the temperatures are starting to get stay a little warmer. Then it looks like we're a couple of days of um, decent weather, high pressure over the area. And then it looks like uh, some sort of warm front tries to get going. What day is that? That is Monday the 21st. And then it falls apart. And then another low tries to work its way up the Ohio Valley again. Wow, that's a, it's like a broken record. Um, but you'll see that a lot of times in, in um, meteorology is that we get into a, a particular pattern cycle. And we'll just show the European idea here too, which isn't all that uh, out of the way of compared to the, the GFS, which is the main uh, American model. Yep, and there's that rain expected on Monday. Then it goes away. And then another low tries to go up the Ohio Valley. Ooh, it's a little farther north. Well, the European does a little better with these sometimes. Oh, there is, a, there is an East Coast storm, and then it transfers its its energy and okay we'll see um yeah so there's a there's definitely in the longer term there's a a disconnect between the two uh models uh so we'll see which one is is correct my guess is is that there'll be something the european could be a little too far north the gfs probably a little too far south it'll probably end up i would almost say right about here which is where most of them are going um, the interesting feature is, that I'm noting here is this low transfers quickly over to uh, the Mid-Atlantic and, and New England really quickly as if there's a, um, something in the upper atmosphere that's, that's causing it to, um, for things to be more favorable that way. It really kind of jumps all of a sudden. It goes from Southern Michigan, six hours later. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, what is it? What's going on here? Oh, the six, oh, whatever. Okay. Oh, the European, oh, this is the European. Hmm. I don't know. That looks really weird too. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now when I back up, okay, that's kind of weird. Anyway, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. There is something uh, uh, going on with that. Oh, and as I said, there was one other thing. We'll just take a real quick look at the radar. Um, and something to kind of bear in mind. You can see that we're having some dry air issues because as it gets closer to the center and let's stop this one of the nice things about uh radar scope is it gives you this ability to uh turn on this it, you kind of notice let's see here and it looks like it tries to precipitate at the radar that's the hole in the middle that's this right here and so back up a little bit. You can kind of see how the dry air is keeping the precipitation kind of at bay. And then just notice that it looked like it was really a really solid line of precipitation. And then as it gets closer to the radar, it kind of falls apart. Well, a lot of that has to do with the amount of dry air in the uh, layer, which I kind of explained the other day when I was on. So we've got this dry air, so you might be getting some sprinkles there. Uh, I can't notice anything out my window right now. And you can kind of tell I'm the uh, I'm up in the Gaylord area, so my home is mapped out on here. You can kind of see that just a little bit east of the expressway. And so... Um, yeah, so this a lot of this precipitation. Now the stuff where it's green and yellow, that's probably hitting the ground, but it's probably much lighter than the green or yellow because as you shoot out here, and if I change yeah distance, and I start it at the radar, it will give you the beam height. So there's almost a thousand feet as you get over here by Mansalona, and um, and then Bel Air is at fourteen hundred feet. 
Uh, so as you're shooting out, you're shooting into the clouds. You're shooting in the low end of the clouds. So there's some precipitation out there. And then it's the same. Th then you notice it's the same thing out in Atlanta. So there could be some snowflakes at that level, which are better reflectors than um, if there's enough of them and they're wet. Um, so you can get you can get a pretty decent uh, amount of reflectivity on the radar that way so it's it could be a melting layer that we're seeing in there where the snow is changing to rain yeah and then of course then you get out here by the lake shore by empire and you're at five thousand feet so you know that's all the that's due to a few things first the curvature of the earth because i remember before the old radars you could put them all the way down to um right at aim them at the horizon and let them go um but they weren't nearly as strong so when they did the modernization we weren't allowed to do that anymore uh, i won't go into the politics of why that is it was anyway um and then uh the other the other thing too is and then there were also shooting at a half degree <laughs> which is what i was getting to um above the horizon now so um everything just kind of goes up very quickly um let's see we're uh, what else i think that's about it so uh, like i said we we kind of covered the forecast um so there's, there'll be a little bit of rain here today more likely the heavier rain won't be until tonight doesn't look like we're gonna get a lot of uh, frozen precipitation or freezing precipitation for that matter uh, temperatures are expected to stay above uh, the freezing level and uh, we'll see where we go with the rest of it. So with that, I am going to switch out here and bid everyone adieu.